What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. It's Friday. We're back with another brand new episode of TGIF. Of course, we are spilling the tea and breaking down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back and relax and get ready to sip and, and take in all of this hot tea. Please welcome brand strategist Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. What's going on, Claudia? I'm good. Where are you now? Jesus. In- are you ever home? No, my, oh, poor, my poor cats. They, they're very feeling very much neglected. I feel awful. I was home for like one day and I left again. Where uh, are you? I'm in New Orleans for Essence. Oh, oh okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yes. And um, please welcome multimedia personality, Funky Daniva. What's up, Q? Why you got that 60 year old lady plum lipstick on? <laughs> I, want my te- I want my teeth to look wider. You, you know, the old ladies at the church, when they want to feel jazzy, and pastor appreciate <laughs> not allowed to real red because red is for whores in church. Right. Oh they, no. They put on that deep thumb where they want to feel sexy for the deacon. This is, you're right. This is my vampy, my vampy. It's a vampy lip. I think he's ready for tonight, Claudia. I don't know about you. I'm oh, he's ready. I'm feeling a little saucy. <laughs> what you oh, doing? I just, on? Sorry. Um vodka and crayon. I'm doing vodka and crayon tonight. Okay, Al, what you drinking on? I'm doing water. But I, I do really quickly, Claudia, want to uh, give a shout out to two soulmates whose birthday is today, Akela Moon and Dave Reynolds. Ren- Reynolds, I think is how you say it. Your Happy birthday, soulmates. Reynolds. Right, Q, he tried to make it sound French. He said Reynolds. <laughs> it's spelled R- it's, it's R-E-N-N-A-L-L-S. What's that, Reynolds? <laughs> Reynolds. Reynolds, your <laughs> first cousin from uh, Horse Pasture, Virginia. <laughs> that is not... All right, y'all. Um, I, I had a few drinks earlier. I was at the men's experience at the uh, Essence Festival, and then I went to some little restaurant. So I've had a few drinks. So we're going to have a good show tonight. That's all I got to say about tonight. Perfect. All right, let's get into it, y'all. Uh, the killing of 25 year old Jalen Walker has sparked protests throughout Akron, Ohio. Police fired more than 90 rounds at Jalen, striking him more than 60 times. Now, he was pronounced dead on the scene. According to the Akron Police Department, Jalen was chased by the police after allegedly refusing to stop when they tried to pull him over for a traffic violation. Now, police claim a shot was fired from inside Jalen's car. The police department released this statement. Actions by the suspect caused the officers to perceive he posed a deadly threat to them. In response to this threat, officers disarmed their firearms, striking the suspect. Now, his family attorney said Jalen was handcuffed after he was shot and killed and that his hands were cuffed behind his back when medical personnel arrived. The officers involved have been placed on administrative leave. Uh, What are your thoughts on yet another senseless killing of black men, of a black man? And Al, why is it that they can witness a white shooter shoot up 15, 20, 35 people, take him into custody without incident? And with a black man, they say, oh, we thought it was a gun. And he's never around to answer. What do you think about this case, first of all? So, you know, Claudia, what was super sad about this case was that they did 90 rounds. What we learned from this story was they shot 90 times and they hit him 60 times and they hit him from his face all the way down to his ankles 60 times. My the question here is, what is it going to take to make stuff like this stop with these types of police that feel like they can use excessive force, which appears to only happen when there is when they're apprehending someone of color? So I thought about this. I really think this family should use this moment to silence America and they should have an open coffin, an open casket. Uh, funeral so that people can see how horrible we are still being treated by really bad police. I agree. They shot him in the face. And then later on, it's like, oh, maybe he didn't fire a shot. Q, what are your thoughts on this? Another story like this? You know, it, it's funny because I have two parents who both work in law enforcement. And, you know, my father always talked about when it's time for you to shoot somebody that you're supposed to, you know, aim for the chest, that the biggest area, so on and so forth. I think we're at a point now where we need to reevaluate police training because I am pretty sure that the the answer that we're going to get from the police department is that these officers acted in the manner in which they were trained and they probably did. But it's time that we revamp 
the training. I mean, obviously, if there's somebody shooting, the police officers have the right to shoot back. But maybe the training needs to say, if you hear three officers shooting back, the, the other 16 of y'all can sit y'all and ask down in y'all car. Everybody ain't got to be shooting at the same damn time. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not in law enforcement, but it definitely is time that we reevaluate our police policies because there's no argument about what took place with this young man was excessive, whether he posed a threat or not. It was excessive. I, I agree with most of your statement, except I don't know if it's a training because it seems like yeah, they can exercise the training when it's a white suspect. When you say a white mental health, uh, someone going through a mental health crisis, they somehow are able to, to capture the nude man running down the street that's spitting at them or threatening them with a knife, right? They're mm -hmm. able to de-escalate. When it's one of us, when it's a black man, it's always shoot first, ask questions later, even to the point of a 12 year old little boy in Tamir Rice in a park, 1.2 seconds. Like, I feel like they pick and choose when they want to like use this, this training. And I do know, we all know that a lot of white supremacists have infiltrated the ranks of, of, of law enforcement. So I feel like it's almost fun to them. Like they're going on a hunt. It just feels that way. Cause yeah. why would you ever need to shoot anything? 90 round shot at and land 60 shots. What, and then what training, what training trains you after you've mutilated a body with bullets that you flip them over and handcuff them? Come on now. What yeah. training? I need Six, to see the manual. 60 shots. And I hate to be graphic. This man probably was damn near liquefied. Oh, yeah. Pulverized. 60 shots. Yeah. It, you know, we, we really do pick and choose when we're brave. But then, you know, in, in Texas, when you had all these little kids in, school, in a school trying to get away from one shooter, you couldn't do that. You sat outside for an hour. But then with this man, it's trigger happy. Like, yeah. it's, I, think, it, I think it's the mentality of the people that we're hiring. I yeah. think we're not hiring good people. I just, I just don't think we're believing we're hiring good people. Oh, speaking of not good people, let's get into this. B-I-T-C-H, we got to talk about the unserved arrest warrant charging Carolyn Bryant Donham, a white woman in the 1955 kidnapping of Emmett Till, has been found nearly 70 years later. Now, last week, members of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, along with two of Till's relatives, searched for the LaFleur La County Courthouse basement and found the unserved warrant in boxes. Now, the family of Emmett Till wants authorities finally to arrest Donham because she's still alive. As you know, Emma Teal was beaten, shot in the head, and tossed into a river. What do you think about this update? Q, let's start with you on this one. Well, listen, I um, first of all, I was shocked to find out that there ever was a warrant. So the fact that there was a warrant from all that time ago means that way back when someone found her relatively guilty or assumably guilty of something, and that warrant was buried for whatever reason um it needs to be served not that it's going to bring Emmett Till back not that the lady's going to do any long time because she's already knocking at death's door but just the symbolism of it alone and for legacy purposes purposes of it alone and if Bill Cosby had to pay five hundred thousand dollars for playing with some 1975 tussie cat then I'm pretty sure that her ass can do, you know, a couple of days or get a house arrest bracelet or something for lying way back when on Emmett Till. I think America owes us this at the very least, at the very, at the very least. Al, what are your thoughts on this? Exactly that they owe us the least. Emmett Till, it was a horrible, horrible hunt down and a horrible killing. Um, and remember, this mother of Emmett Till had an open coffin because she wanted the people of Chicago and the Northerners to see just how poorly Southerners were treating people of color, black, black men especially. Now, this is what I love about this story. I don't care that she's 80 years old. In the state of Mississippi, a war arrest warrant and a bench warrant never expires, okay? Whether the person lives in the state still or not, because we know she moved to North Carolina. In addition, in the state of Mississippi, there's no statute of limitation for kidnapping. And remember, she was a part of the kidnapping because she identified Emmett Till as the one that disrespected her. If, if a hundred year old man 
who served as a security guard at the Jewish concentration camps can go to jail because we heard this week that a hundred year old man was sent to prison because he served as a prison guard at uh, he aided in abetting the murders of the Jewish uh, 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 camps. Then this 80 year old woman can go to jail for assisting and betting in the murder of Emmett Till. And in addition, that that sheriff that claimed he couldn't serve that warrant because he was concerned about her two kids. They need to take his ass in, too, and lock him up. Is he still alive? He's still alive. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know how these people sleep at night. They don't. Her. The, all the people that were involved with Rosewood, the, the lady that lied in Rose, the, 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 what happened in Rosewood in Florida, you know, another white woman that lied instead of black men trying to rape her and all those people that were hung from trees, men, women, and children because of a lie from a woman that had all this racism in her heart. And then this woman's still alive. She's seen all these conversations and all this talk about this and she's just chilling. But and the people- wanna know, You wanna know what's funny, Claudia? And I think the reason why I find a bit of solace and, and in peace in the fact that she hasn't gone to jail is because one thing that I do know well is human nature. She's not sleeping easy at night. She's not. She's not. You trust and believe this haunts her. It haunts her and it is going to haunt her to her grave. Trust and believe that lady ain't sleeping easy at night. Not that I think least- them, them serving this arrest warrant needs to haunt her because a lot of people who have that that deep rooted racism, the kind that you're going to go have a young man uh, killed and thrown in a lake because he whistled at you because he acknowledged you that type of hate, that type of racism. They don't have a conscience. She going to get one soon. And I hope it's from a jailhouse. They owe it to us at the very least. And you can't just be making a mockery of the judicial system, the justice system in America, where we go, like Q said, dig up cases from 1973, 1975, which they deserve justice as well. But this was a little boy who was lynched, murdered, body parts removed, drowned in a lake. And I know I know y'all seen the pictures of his body in his open casket. Uh, You know, it's it doesn't even look. Emmett does not even look like a human being. And yet this bitch, and I'm saying the word bitch, I know we're not supposed to be cussing as much, is still alive. Let us get some justice. Let us get a, a five-year sentence. Let us get something. something. This little boy's life meant something to America. And I not know full that, of crap, America. I know that this is not the appropriate time to crack a joke, but Patrice Cullors with the Black Lives Matter money, while you right here <laughs> buying $6 million <laughs> properties that we can't account for, this is the type of stuff that you That's need to- right. The Black Lives Matter money for that's unaccounted for. So you can hire like 50, 11 attorneys from every state in every jurisdiction and every Olivia Pope and every publicist company east of the Mississippi. This is what the Black Lives Matter money needs to be used for. So we could lobby the appropriate people to get justice, not for you to be buying mansions from east to west coast and to be throwing parties. I'm just I saying. Agree. And it's 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 so frustrating. And I'm not calling for violence on anyone, but I'm just so shocked that, you know, black people, I'm talking to you right now. We so quick to pay back the people in our neighborhood that look like us when they did us wrong or disrespected us or stepped on our sneakers or whatever little nonsense you got going on and and and, and take them out. But the Zimmermans and this Carolyn B walk around unscathed, untouched, unner- not even nervous. And it's just like, I I don't get our mentality sometimes. Again, this is not a call to go get them, but it's amazing how we're not fearful of one another, like the the disregard of each other's lives. But then these people walk around without a care in the world. Real quick, before we go uh, to commercial break, um, I want to switch gears here, guys. Now, during the interview with Tasha- Can can I I clarify something? Because I just need to clarify for the short people. Uh For For the people on the short bus, what Claudio was saying is the gang people, instead of shooting at the other gangs, why don't y'all go shoot up the people who deserve <laughs> to be shot? That's what she was saying. And we don't condone the violence, but what she's saying is instead of going and shooting up other people that look like us, why don't y'all become vigilantes and go shoot up Carolyn and shoot up George Zimmerman? That's what she was saying in coded language for plain English. I said it. And my views are not the views of Fox Soul, Fox Corporation, and or TGIF. But there are some of y'all who are in the GED section, and I just want to make it clear what she was saying. Instead of shooting up each other, we need to be shooting up the people who create these atrocities against us, but I don't condone violence. 
Oh, no, no one here at Fox Soul would ever condone violence. Right, Al? We would never oh, condone never, violence. Oh, never, never, never. Hey, don't, don't go do it, y'all. But our, uh, but we don't take it. Go shoot somebody. If you don't let this woman get us to commercial void. <laughs> Let's take a commercial break, and y'all can marinate on what was just said. We'll be back with more TGIF <laughs> after the break. Go get them. I mean, yo, welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. Uh, y'all off the chain, the chat. Q and, and Al, they are wilding out. Listen, they think you're going you to get reported and get in trouble, Q. They say we're we going to get we Wait, get canceled. Wait, the one that gagged me is that they say they played a Patrice commercial every time I go in on her. I promise y'all, we don't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> that's karma and that's God and God want the receipts for that Black Lives Matter money. <laughs> and that is why he keep reminding us and reminding Patrice and Dr. Umar, we on that ass about them funds. Where the school, doctor? Where the school? No? Okay. Speaking of schools, I want to shift gears uh, during an interview with... Uh, no, that's terrible. Mm, sorry, y'all. Yeah. Tasha- Which one? What? You already Tasha- did there. R. Kelly's brother, Carrie Kelly, admitted that he lied on R. Kelly multiple times throughout his sexual abuse scandal. When asked why he lied, Kelly responded, because I was angry. I knew that it was a lot of people out there saying there were tapes and things of that nature. And I basically mixed the truth with things that I heard other people saying. Wow. I was angry and I was hurt and I was immature and I went about it the wrong way. Okay, so what is the truth then? What do y'all think about Kerry Kelly's confession? Al, what do you think about this? So he's saying he put 10 on 20 in R. Kelly's case? I, I don't even understand the purpose of this interview, to be honest. honest. I mean, to me, this is just my opinion. It felt kind of thirsty. It, it felt like that he was reaching for a story. Because what can we do? What can we do with any of the information that he shared in in that sit down with Tasha K. I know that's y'all's friend and I enjoy her too, but what would, what did we get out of that interview that would change your perspective on why R. Kelly should be placed underneath the jail? And and I'm I'm like Q on this one. I'm just like Q on this one. I think the manager, his ex-wife, his brother, his security guards, any and everybody that participated in this and, and watched and knew what he was doing and did and didn't stop it. All of them should be locked up. Now, how Dre again in it? That lady was just back there doing a one two one two step. How she got to go to jail? Al? No, she lived in the house. She lived upstairs in the house where the girls were downstairs. The girls were downstairs in that house, she and they couldn't go. In the closet, Al. Now we ain't gonna send that lady to jail now. Listen. Yeah. Now, we ain't going to mm. send Dre and Kelly to jail. Now, this one How I'm many, saying. I need to know this for real. How many people can live with your husband with that type of activity going on in your house, in your basement, and you not know what was going on? Come on, soulmates. I need some answers on this. Could you live in a house with a man for more than 10 years and not know what was going on downstairs in the basement? If I you think was I- three stories up and he didn't allow you to uh, okay. nah. answer the door for Pizza Hut, yeah, not maybe. Me. The story was that he was seriously micromanaging and he was controlling even where she was. I, I don't blame her for it. I don't know. We can always talk to so her. So you never her. peeked out the window. You never saw a van drive up. You never saw girls come and go in, in that house in, in, in the course of 30 years. I'm not saying they were together. I, I'm not going to make Drea Kelly guilty of what right. R. Kelly did. And we're not putting her on trial. But this is what I want to say about the brother. Honestly and truthfully, his testimony, whatever he's saying in his recantment is inconsequential because it's not like it was his testimony that put R. Kelly in jail in the first place. It was the testimony of the eyewitnesses and all the other other people. So this information really is useless information. And to Al's point, it does look a bit thirsty. It looks like you want fame. It looks like a half-baked attempt to maybe help your brother, but he ain't getting out. He did he 25 year reign of terror. So he's gonna do a 35 reign as the prison the choir director at Rikers Island or wherever the hell they send in his ass. And that's just all to it. Mm. Imagine that you're so thirsty for attention that your claim to fame is, oh, I'm the brother of the man that molests all these girls. And now I want to do some interviews about it and talk about how I, I was and I didn't I wasn't that forthcoming or I lied in the interviews. What kind of losers are you? Mm. I, I'm gonna go ahead and call you that. Like you had your chance to tell the truth. This R. Kelly thing didn't just come out the blue. We've been just, there's been whispers about this for 20 years. And now 
when your brother gets sentenced, now you're like, oh, I lied a little bit on the interviews. That's, think, that's the hill you want to die on? It's a deep rooted jealousy. I think with, I think with, I mean, I, I don't know this to be a fact, but I could imagine any family where one person is famous, everybody wants to be famous. And so yeah. maybe, maybe now this is just his opportunity now that his brother is out of the way that he gets to be famous, even if it's, I'm the brother of R. Kelly. Mm. Can y'all show his picture, the brother's picture? Do we have a picture of the brother? Congratulations, <laughs> Carrie. You played yourself. There you go. You're on Fox Soul right now. You made it. <laughs> uh oh, Claudia's on one tonight, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. All right. Moving on. Uh, Chelsea Handler claims her high school alma mater won't induct her into their Hall of Fame because she opened up about having three abortions. Handler claims, apparently the school is upset about how much I talk about my abortions. So I've decided to start a grassroots campaign. You should donate to Planned Parenthood, then march, then vote. But after you're done with that, go online and tweet messages to my school district for my alma mater. Let them know how you feel about this gross injustice. Al, what are your thoughts on Chelsea Handler's claims and uh, how do you feel about this? So let me tell you something. It's so funny because you know that the, the school, her high school is located in Livingston, if I'm not mistaken, New Jersey. All right. Now, the state of New Jersey is a pro-choice state. They just recently signed two weeks ago a bill protecting abortion. So for her to argue that like her her school and her and the state it, it's very against her talking about abortions is kind of weird to me, right? For her to make that argument. But Q and Claudia, can we just unpack this for one second? I just want one second. Claudia, on Cocktails with Queens, when I watch you guys cover um, the Roe versus Wade, Vivica mentioned that 60% of the women that abort are white women. And some feel that there's a theory out there that the reason why that there was this quick reversal was so that the white uh demographic mm -hmm. will still remain the dominant demographic in the United States. Because if things continue at the rate at, that it's going and white women continue to be the highest number of women to abort, the white race would then become a minority race in the United States. Did I understand y'all's conversation correctly? Mm -hmm. That's right. So to me, Chelsea Handler is a poster girl for that. She admits that she had two abortions at the age of 16 and she had a total of three. So think about that for a minute. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that she actually is exactly who they don't want aborting kids, but she's so open and so free and so transparent about her abortions to the point where people say that she's kind of making a joke of it. Um, for her school to do that is complete trash. I mean, any woman that goes out and publicly talks about abortions, that's a brave thing and a scary thing to do. And you know, you're going to get ridiculed and judged immediately. And for her to talk about it, to give context to, you know, her, her feelings about uh, the Roe versus Wade re reversal. I think that's really tacky of them to do that. I, there's, there's athletes that have literally been accused of murder <laughs> that they are not keeping out of Hall of Fames. Q, what you think? This lady, whole coochie is a crematorium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. Any man that run up in Chelsea Handler, baby, you running up in a haunted house. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, <laughs> not two, but three. <laughs> Y'all talking about? <laughs> and we are. <laughs> We on season four, a stranger thing. Let me tell you something, baby. You ain't got to go to Universal Halloween Horror <laughs> Night. Just go around Chelsea Handler House and get some of that haunted house coochie. Jesus Christ. Three. Woo, do Jesus. Woo. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. How did, I, honestly, I'm not trying to be funny, but I didn't know you could have Woo. two abortions in one year. Woo. Apparently she did. Honey. I didn't you know, know you could have. I didn't know, know that you could have two abortions. Don't call her ass Casper the ghost, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she run a Halloween horror nights out her bedroom. Any man that run up in that thing, you better be well, honey, because <laughs> <laughs> you gonna leave out there with some spirits on you, baby. Woo! Go on to the next thing, Claudia. We don't already got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. 
From the haunted house to the crematorium. Crack house. Here's shocking news. Lamar Odom has always been outspoken about wanting his ex Khloe Kardashian back, but it looks like he may be interested in someone else. During a recent interview, Odom said if he were given the choice. <laughs> what's these topics? I can't. He would choose to date Taraji P. Henson instead of Khloe. Lamar said, I love Taraji. It's a love thing. It's about who you love. He went on to say, I think the difference between Taraji and Chloe is how they were brought up. Their upbringing makes people different and affects the way they think. I think Taraji is more skillful in what she does as an actress compared to what Chloe does. <sighs> oh, correction. It wasn't a crack house. It was a whorehouse in, in Nevada <laughs> that he was in. My bad. Uh, what are your thoughts on what Lamar Odom said in the comparison he made? This story right here just rubs me the wrong way. It's irritating. What do y'all think Lamar about this? Lamar Odom people. Lamar Odom people. <laughs> y'all didn't tell him to take his crack that ass back to Atlanta and keep messing with Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop and leave <laughs> Taraji P. Henson the hell alone, okay? The only unstable black man that we are allowing Taraji P. Henson to ever get involved with is Tyrese Gibson. Beyond that, leave Taraji alone. Carly Red and her booty implants is somewhere in Atlanta waiting on you. Go tear up her life, but leave to matter of fact, you want to go tear up somebody's life since you like multicultural women. Go around Chelsea Hand the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hide house coochie since you got all them damn demons. Go on over there and be, be number four and get on that Halloween <laughs> war. But leave Taraji pissing alone. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Uh, so you know i really like lamar odom like if anybody knows lamar odom he is a really cool dude but i feel like lamar odom's manager or his team or maybe his publicist constantly tells him to talk about his past celebrity relationships and i hate that shit i hate and i'm sorry i hate that because like remember when he was in the big brother house the whole time he talked about uh chloe, chloe, uh, chloe right when he was on CBS, when he was on prime television, he talked about Chloe. Now that he's on BET, College Hill, now he's talking about a black female celebrity that he used to date, um, Taraji. The thing is, think about this man. He is so, he, he's, been, he's been through so much. He's been, he's done amazing things. He was, he was drafted number four in his draft class in 99. He has two time, a two time NBA champion. He made over $155 million in his basketball career. He was six man of the year in 2011. He's done some amazing things in his sports life and we don't talk about it. And he's overcome so many things, including addiction, that he should be out here motivating other people to live better and be better. Instead, he's riding the coattail of women that he dated. And it's just not right because it doesn't match the good person that he actually is. I say he just go around Chelsea Handler house. I mean, she, she seemed to take any and everybody. I'm mean, just... I'm just saying, she's available. <laughs> she don't mind. She'll let you shoot up the club. I mean, <laughs> why not be number four? <laughs> <laughs> Roe v. <Wade. laughs> Claudia. <laughs> he like him um. white. She like him black. <laughs> Seems like it works to me. <laughs> she's pro-choice. Oh, Thank John. <laughs> you. <laughs> you I'm gonna say this about Lamar Odom. He's been kind of cloud chasing for a while. As talented as a brother he is, I remember when he dated her briefly. And there's a few black women in Hollywood he tried to get something started with, and it didn't hit like that. And then Chloe was the one that it blew up and sent him to the next level. But I do think that's a good idea, Q. I think him and Chelsea Handler. <laughs> you two, I'm right. putting both of you two in timeout. <laughs> but just and we're go, all halfway through the show. <laughs> go ahead and Google what Lamar was doing around that time. There was a whole lot of stuff. I, I'm, I'm biting my tongue right now. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we're going to re, uh, just reevaluate our lives after having that lengthy conversation that rant about baby ghosts that Q went on real quick. And we're going to take a break. We, we'll be right back with more TGIF after this. You out of control tonight, Q. 
Welcome back to TGIF. If you're enjoying the show tonight, put some ghosts in the chat and let us know you are enjoying the show. All right, y'all. All these supply chain shortages and things that we can't find in the grocery store anymore. And it's just kind of like driving a lot of people cry cry and like making us a little nervous. So maybe you were one of the millions of people who tried to make bread a couple of years ago and grow your own stuff. Or maybe the thought of growing your own sourdough starter was, well, a non-starter for you. Um, I know I'm looking for different uh, opportunities and different choices with, with the stuff that I eat. I mean, we, we have so many people on this planet now. We have to get, kind of get creative. So uh, whichever one you were, we can all agree that there's nothing like hot, delicious, fresh baked bread. Well, check this out now. What if I told you that you could get all the flavor with none of the time and work involved? Well, now you can from Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first bake from frozen box for artisanal, artisanal bread. Uh, plus they have amazing rolls, pastries, and even homemade pasta. Um, I finally got my package. I got my homemade pasta and homemade pasta is amazing. Fellas, did y'all try your wild grain products? I know Q, you had the waffles, right? I did. So, you know, what? I love it. I got my box last night, y'all. I woke up at 2.50 and I was hungry and I, I didn't have anything in my refrigerator. And I was like, oh crap, wild grains. Baby, I got those artisanal waffles. I popped those bad boys in the toaster, put me two pieces of bacon in the air fryer. And when I tell you those waffles gave me what I needed at 2.50 a.m. in the morning, I'm all here for the wild grains and I cannot wait to try the other products. Artisanal waffles. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite were was the um, the croissants. So the interesting thing about it is they deliver the croissants to you at basically as dough. And you pop it in the oven and watch it rise. So you actually get a very hot croissant. And if you're anything like me and, and you love croissants and bread and hot bread and butter with honey, uh, hey, Wild Grains is on to something. Thumbs up to Wild Grains. Wild, and I love wild. how they sent, every, they sent everything in a box with some dry ice and everything right. felt refrigerated cool when it showed up. Now, Wild Grain uses only clean ingredients such as unbleached and non-GMO flour and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's better for you and tastes better than anything you could find in a grocery store. Plus, for every new member, Wild Grains donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank. Now, they've don donated over 120,000 so far. Now, here's how it works. Sign up, choose what type of box you want and receive and, and to receive and how often. Then Wild Grain delivers a box of bread, pasta, and pastries with easy to follow instructions for free. Now, every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. So that's pretty amazing. Now, if you're traveling or if your freezer is already stocked, no problem. It's easy to reschedule, skip, or cancel. Now, are y'all already hungry already? Well, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box, plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. You heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea. That's wildgrain.com slash tea, or you can use promo code T at checkout. Make sure you check it out. We've all got this product. We've all tried it, and it's really good stuff. I, I really encourage you to check it out. Welcome back to TGIF. Okay, guys, I want to talk about an unfortunate story out of San Antonio, Texas. Now, the death toll from a sweltering tractor trailer found on the southwest side of San Antonio has reached over 50. The people were traveling from Mexico, Honduras, and Guatemala, but officials have not confirmed if the victims were migrants. We're sending our thoughts and prayer to the families and friends of those affected by this tragedy. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this news? I mean, they... they they found a truckload of people and every day more die. Al, what do you think about this? Uh, this is, uh, this is just, it was, it's sad. It's unfortunate, but Claudia, this is human trafficking and, and Texas and especially San Antonio is, is, it's, it's not the first time in 2017, just five years ago, 39 were found and 10 were dead in Victoria, Texas in 2003, 19 found were found dead. It's it, this the thing that that threw me the most about this story was when they found these fifty three people dead and the ones alive that they pulled out. They said they smelled like steak seasoning salt, so that they would not be sniffed out by dogs for human trafficking them across the border. That was just very very sad to me. We have a problem 
when women and kids are found dead smelling like steak seasoning sauce on the back of a tractor trailer truck. We've got to crack down against human trafficking, period. Mm, super sad. Q, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I want us to make the clear distinction between, you know, all of it is human trafficking, but this, this was people from my understanding, not necessarily being sex trafficked or human trafficked in a negative way, but trying to make it to the United States. Am I correct on that, Al? Yes, yes. But you know, what happens in these cases, Q, is that there's a coordinator of this trafficking. Uh, uh, right. So it's it's still considered human, human trafficking. trafficking. It's not sex it. trafficking, it's I get human it. trafficking. I just don't want it to get conflated because oftentimes human trafficking at this point has taken on that connotation of girls being trapped in vans, so on and so right, forth. Right. You know, stories like this are particularly, you know, interesting and close to me because again, everybody knows I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, where we always see situations where the Coast Guards find boats with six and 10 and 12 people dead from heat stroke and all of this because they're trying to escape Cuba or escape wherever they come from. And the first thing that comes to mind for me is, what hell were these people living in that they had to put their lives in this type of danger or risk to even get to the United States? Um, I'm also questioning, you know, did the truck, you know, was the truck always non-refrigerated or did the refrigerator go out on the truck? I would think it'd be common sense that you can't move 50 something odd people through sweltering heat more than X amount of miles without them dying from heat stroke. It honestly feels and sounds like a tragic accident. And I just feel bad that there are people who live in countries whose conditions are so bad that they will have to risk their lives like this just to get to the US. So my heart goes out to those families. And I, I, I just pray that the world as a whole gets better so situations like this don't have to exist. And, and I want people to humanize these people and stop just referring to them as migrants. Migrants is a really hard thing to connect with, right? When you hear the word migrants, you think, ooh, they're trying to come here and take American jobs and, you know, and, and rob the system. These are men, women, and children that were, like you said, both of you, trying to escape the conditions in their countries where it was far worse, where they thought the risk was worth the reward. The fact that people would allow themselves to be, uh, to, to, to trust these, uh, I think they call them coyotes, that, that kind of get these folks over the border and they make these deals with them and charge them crazy amounts of money. Oh, I can guarantee you entry into America. They charge them thousands of dollars. Sometimes they have to work it off in sex and it becomes sex trafficking. And then to think that they, more than half of them just died in a, in a hot truck. And what happened? Did the truck break down and whoever was responsible for getting them over left them there and abandoned them? I just want us to have not you guys, but our, us as a country to have a little compassion about what these people are running from, because we have a lot of compassion for the U Ukrainian folks that are running from their situations in their countries. But we don't seem to have that same compassion for when they're they're black and brown like this. And I hate to make it a racing, but this is Fox Soul. And our number one priority is talking about the black experience and the brown experience. And, and I just feel like we this thing kind of gets we're almost over it a few days later. This is horrible. Yeah. And imagine, like you said, Q, what are they running from to yeah. have to risk that? And, and Claudia, while you're at it, speaking of things, man, sweep up, swept up under the rug, we still ain't got an update to what happened to all them Haitian people that was up under the uh, bridge. Well, yes, we do. They got sent back. All of remember? them? Uh, the, oh, remember, they, we, we chartered all type of planes to get them back, okay. to send okay. them back. Okay. I just wanted to make sure there was a period at the end of that sentence. That's all. And I need people to realize that it wasn't President Biden. It was... It was uh, uh, our governor here in Texas, um, Greg Abbott, had those men out there on those horses with those whips, kind of, and they made commemorative coins of that to kind of celebrate what they were doing to the Black folks mm. that were trying to cross over. It was disgusting. And I hope he loses to better. All right. On a recent episode of the television series P Valley, two male characters, Little Murder and Big Teak, are shown having sex. Lil Duvall shared his thoughts about the scene on social media and received a bit of backlash because of it. Duvall tweeted, yeah, P-Valley lost me. They need a super gay advisory on movies like this. They got for everything else. Because that's a lot to see if you're not used to it. Duvall continued, and no, the lesbian ain't bother me because I'm used to it. That's what y'all missing. It's not about what you're used to. You're always going to be shocked at something you're not used to. That's human nature. You can't just throw something on somebody and be offended because they're shocked. The writer and co-executive producer for P-Valley, Patrick Ian Pope, responded to Duvall's tweet by writing this. 
As a writer and producer of P-Valley, specifically a writer of this episode, I encourage you to step away from Chuck and Lisa. Chuck, is that how you say it? Chuck and Lisa? Chuck and Lisa. Mm-hmm. Chuck and Lisa. Uh, this show is not for you. Go watch something else because the gay ain't going nowhere. Q, oh, let's start with you. What do you think about this? Uh, you know what? You know what I don't like? Don't try to veil your homophobia in being shocked. All right. I'm shocked. I'm not homophobic. I'm just shocked. I need an advisory. You're full of SHIT. Here's the thing that makes us most, here's the thing that makes him most uncomfortable. And here's the thing that I love the most about that scene. Straight male people, straight male people. I'm here to tell you, if you are a straight man and you got a clique of homeboys of five or more, I can assure you one of them get down. Okay. It happens. It's in, re- it, it happens. It happens in real life. I'm going to tell a little bit of my business that ain't none of y'all, but two of my deepest loves, two of the deepest men I have ever been in love with have been married men with families. One of them calls my phone right now and still rattles my bones. I have to turn my phone over and not answer when he calls. Okay. Because the, the love was that intense. So I completely can relate to the relationship between Uncle Clifford and this quote unquote straight man. We live in a world where sexuality is fluid. And if people were allowed to be who they were without fear of judgment, consequence, and backlash, we would all be having sex with men, women, and flower pots, okay? So get used to it. Gay is here, we here to stay. And, you know, the Boosies and the Duvals of the world, let me, you know, the, the ones that's always screaming the loudest is the ones you always got to look out for. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I mean, you, it ain't like people don't know that what P-Valley is about. So it's kind of like watching a gay porn and, and paying for one. They'd be like, oh, I must look away. <laughs> you know, and the thing that's wait sucks, a minute, the thing that sucks, too, it's the privilege of it all. It's like your love and your experience deserves representation. But because you don't necessarily agree or understand with mine, mine doesn't deserve any representation. It's the privilege of it all. And that's what scares me about if we ever truly let heterosexual Black men through the door, that they would close it for everybody behind them. Okay. Uh, I, I see a lot of people in the, com- in the quotes, talk in the comments. How about your affair, Q? We're going to get into that later. Al, what you think about this? Is it me or is it always the short ones that cause the most ruckus? <laughs> Let no, me tell you something. It's, no, it's the closeted ones. It's the short ones. He's like 5'2", right? Let me tell you something, little Duvall. First of all, um, one, doesn't he live in Atlanta? So... Isn't Atlanta one of the largest hubs for gay black men and 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 and, and the gay lifestyle? I, I don't understand why he's acting like he's never seen gay love before or gay intensity before. That does, that doesn't make sense. Number two, number one, number two, little Duvall, what are you doing watching a show that's women centric and gay friendly where the lead character is a transgender? uh owner of a strip club he's the lead character who's for all intents and purposes is a gay man with wig and hair and makeup and lipstick and long nails and all that great stuff and you're in season two which leads me to believe that you set through season one with all that gay sex so what 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 exactly is he saying now he wants an advisory put on on the show how about you just don't watch yeah, I mean, if it's this, you don't have to watch it. Like with this show, if you don't like the commentary, then you probably shouldn't watch it. You should know what to expect at this point. You're, I agree. You're in season two. I didn't see the scene. I don't. I haven't watched, so I don't know how edgy it usually gets. I'm seeing mixed comments, uh, mixed positions in the comment. But I'm hearing from what I do know about P Valley, they 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 show they show that. That's right. what the show kind of is about in Uncle Clifford and all these kind of things. So it shouldn't be shocking that this is happening. So I, 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 I want to make something perfectly clear, too. And the reason why I call out and I want to drive the point home of veiled homophobia, because for you to insist that there needs to be an advisory suggests that there's something wrong. You see what I'm saying? Or there's something so bad about it that people need to be advised. We don't need an advisory when it's a heterosexual sex scene. 
So why should we need an advisory when it's a gay sex scene? So miss me with the veiled homophobia. Your ass just too scared to get canceled to say what you really wanted to say. So you want to hide behind the word shocked. But I see you and it's veiled homophobia. On that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with the last segment of the show right here on TGIF. All right, y'all, moving on. Uh, In Vacations Gone Wrong news, a fight involving 60 people broke out on a Carnival cruise ship over cheating allegations. Apparently, an alleged threesome between passengers upset their significant others, resulting in the brawl. Now, the fight lasted about one hour and involved passengers on the fifth floor of the ship all the way down to the first floor. So it was going down. Now, according to the New York Post, the U.S. uh, Coast Guard had to be called in to escort the ship to the shore. Have y'all anything? Have y'all ever heard anything like this? And Alan, here you have some insight. Uh, I got some. <laughs> Q's right. ready for this. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to be messy, everybody. So just brace yourself. So we have an eyewitness, everyone, on the ship. And the eyewitness said this. The eyewitness said, after the angry lovers confronted their respective partners is when the fight broke out. All right, let me repeat that one more time. This eyewitness said, after the angry lovers confronted their respective partners, the fight then broke out. So given that, Q, Claudia, what do you think the composition of the threesome was? I don't know. Two men and a woman? (laughs) No, that's after the angry lovers confronted their respective partners. I don't know, Al. I'm not that smart today. <laughs> so allegedly, it, it it could have been a lesbian brawl, but we'll find out soon. Oh, you well, don't you know? know? So we don't know. Well, did, we're just going off of what the eyewitness said. Well, so one thing I do know from living in Atlanta, them lesbians fight, baby. They don't have no problem <laughs> fighting. And them, them, them letting y'all can feel any kind of way you want to. Them lesbians, they get it down. They got the most domestic violence with lesbian relationships, be the most domestic violence relationships in the gay community I have ever seen. Uh, but you know what? This this is what you get when you go on Groupon cruises, okay? Because I don't know how the hell one threesome turned into 60 people fighting. Now, uh, they, somebody was slagging Tussie Cat all across the first first, second, third, fourth, and the fifth floor for that many people to get angry for a situation that only so-called involves three people. I can't wait to we find out more details about that story. All right. Blasting <laughs> movie, blasting music in your car will now be punishable, a punishable offense in Florida. Your people's cue. The new law will be enforced today, July 1st, and drivers will be fined up to $114 or receive a ticket if the audio from the vehicle is heard 25 feet away. Q, what do you think about this new law in your state? I hate it and it definitely affects me because I drive a convertible and I always have my music turned up one notch above the loudest. My biggest issue with it, though, is that, you know, the I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely all for um, um, not aggravating other people's ability to live peaceably. When I drive through, through gas stations, I turn my music down. When I drive through neighborhoods, I turn my music down. My biggest concern is that this now gives police yet another arbitrary reason to profile people or pull us over for no damn reason. Because you're not going to tell me that they are going to be outfitted with some type of Ghostbusters machine that measures the decibel of music from where they are. They're going to ride by and arbitrarily say, your music was too loud. That's why we're pulling you over. Now we smell weed. Now we're handcuffing you. Now you're in jail, so on and so forth. So I think this is a bunch of BS from my state of Florida. It does leave too much to chance and it's very vague. You know, like if, if I like the music, do I not pull them over? If I don't, then I pull them over. Uh, Al, real quick, what do you think? I don't care what anyone says. This feels like an anti-black law to me. Yeah, I felt. You know what? I felt the same way. Al, honestly, I did until I had to realize where I live. And again, Miami is much different from the state of Florida. And I know I joke about that, but in Miami, you see some of everybody with their top down. The Latins. You see the white boys on the motorcycles, you see, you know, the black people in they donks and Chevys. So I can only speak for Miami. In Miami, it will affect everyone. But in other places, yeah, I, I thought back to that situation where that guy 
uh, shot the black boy at the gas station because his music was too loud. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it instantly took me there. It does feel a bit anti-black. Because, you know, in, in Miami, only during the black weekends do they uh, institute a noise violation and a curfew. I really don't like what's been happening in the past four or five years with 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 Florida and, and Texas. It, it's they just seem just way too anxious to get to this. We're regressing. It's uh, those used to be two of the best states to live in for the economy, the tax breaks, the opportunities, the weather. And now I don't even recognize these places anymore. They're just getting too out of control. We got a loud music act before we got a Karen act. Ain't that something? Before we do anything about these guns. That music part. before guns. That Uterus part. before guns. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for doing such a fantastic job tonight. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stick around. The house is up next. Y'all have a great weekend and a great 4th of July holiday. We'll see you on the other side. Bye, soulmates. <laughs>